waste of time. And most relationships are oftentimes relationships are an opportunity for deeper healing for both the individuals, for the individual self and the other person as well. The challenge is most people enter into relationships from a transactional or conditional perspective. For example, transactional might be, I need you to pay the bills and I'll take care of the home. That's a transaction. There's a give and take involved in that type a dynamic. And there's nothing wrong with that. Spiritual relationships actually have a deeper purpose, a deeper meaning in them. I want to read something to you I read uh, on Jason Gaddis's uh, Instagram. He says, relationships are, or I wrote down, relationships are a gateway to healing. And what he wrote is, good relationships heal trauma. Just being in a good one can repair years of hurt feeling unseen and feeling alone. Thus, relationships are a path to healing and personal transformation. Again, that was Jason Gaddis, okay? Here's the challenges, challenge for many of you. You're experiencing unhealthy, transactional, or conditional relationships that cause most people to suffer on the inside. And because being in a bad relationship feels better than being alone, wounded people, now, I want to repeat that. Being in a bad relationship feels better than being alone. I think so many people sadly subscribe to this and wounded people who haven't done the inner work, that haven't done the healing, oftentimes suffer the most. And relationships are an opportunity to expand oneself on your individual journey. Now, let me pause for a second. If you happen to watch the interview I did with Rabbi Manus Friedman, he shared something very profound. When two whole people enter into a relationship, ideally the container of marriage is the, the, path for e the path for deeper growth for the individual. The challenge is when a person shows up unhealed, through, you know, stuck in their wounds, stuck in the past and whatnot, they need, in, the container of a relationship is very difficult to grow from. Okay, so I just shared that from that perspective. Now I wanna lean into how to know it's time to move on because that's really what this title is about. How do you know it's time to move on? I just have to read my notes for a second. I said, if your needs for closeness, commitment, safety, and trust are unmet, after several attempts or requests to meet those needs. I'm gonna repeat that. If your need for closeness, commitment, safety and trust are unmet after several attempts or requests to meet those needs, or you need deeper healing outside of the container relationship, which will block your individual expansion, it's time to move on. So let me expand upon that for a second. Maybe look at it this way. The, pers the person cannot grow with you or meet you in the container of a committed relationship. Or maybe you being in the relationship can't cause you to grow. Okay, I want you to really think about this for a moment. I know this might sound like a lot of gobbledygook or whatnot, but the reality is, is if two people choose to enter into the dynamic of a relationship, the relationship is an opportunity to co-create something. Let me repeat, that's an opportunity to co-create something together, to build something together. The problem is dating today has more to do with entertainment and having a good time instead of exploring the real purpose of a relationship. And the purpose of a relationship is for two people to grow together, to build something together. And the purpose of dating is vetting that person to determine if they can grow with you. And as I said earlier, you might meet someone you can't grow with, or maybe the confines of a relationship makes it difficult for you to grow. In either case, it's time to move on. It's time to let go. The challenge with letting go is it oftentimes feels painful. It feels painful to let go because we become attached to another person. Once you think about it, we become attached to another person. And the minute we become attached, it's hard to let go. In fact, many people just double down on the relationship. In some cases, they double down just 
absolutely being silent to making requests for closeness, commitment, safety, and trust. Many of you ladies have duct tape on your mouth and you're afraid to speak up. If you're in a relationship where you're afraid to speak up, if you're in a relationship where you're afraid to ask for your needs, then you're in the wrong relationship. Either they're not the right person for you, but quite frankly, if you can't speak up, you're not the right person for him. I know that's hard to believe, but that means you have individual work that needs to be done. So why am I diving into this today? I have something to share with every one of you that relates to this from a very personal level. And I've crafted a letter which is gonna be posted in about 45 minutes on my channel and I wanna read it to everyone, okay? And the, the letter goes like this. Dear friends, romantic love doesn't follow rules and the journey of coupling most likely is for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. As many of you know, for the past year, someone special entered my life and our experience together has taught me so much about what it means to truly love and more importantly, what it means to go all in. The gifts experienced all these months throughout our union are more than I could have imagined except for one, the all in. With deep sadness, I announced today that my romantic connection with Marie has ended and we are transmuting our relationship our relationship into something new over the next few weeks. I do not doubt that our souls were meant to connect because there was a deeper healing for each of us as part of our journey. Sometimes even great love isn't about going the distance. It might just be about shining a light on the places where our little kid hasn't fully stepped into our adult and romantic love can be a container for more significant expansion and growth. Moving in together was a leap of faith and thankfully we treated each other with respect. And as we said to each other often, we make great roommates, which is rare for those of us in midlife who are pretty set in our ways. We were so enmeshed in our daily lives that finding our space back into our eye after being a we for so many days might take some time and we're both a little scared. We are parting with respect, gentleness, and most of all, love. We are celebrating the profound lessons learned and with gratitude for an incredible, uh, incredible love and blessings, too many to count. Marie helped me break open the fear of taking care of someone and my dependency on others, which I've experienced my entire life, especially helping me discover who I truly am as a man and what it means to love oneself and love another. If I'm being honest with you all, there's nothing easy about writing this message or sharing this message with you. And please know my inner child is hurting and I'm sad. And I know Marie feels the same way. Endings can be uncomfortable, bordering on painful. And at the same time, I choose to imagine a more extraordinary things for both of us coming our way. While we are sad, we hold space for our relationship to find its new form over the next few months as we unravel our joint lives into our individual lives. And please know we're in a good place. And while it's rare to say this, we both feel like this is the right thing to do. I know for many of you, this might come as a shock because we, we shared so publicly our relationship. We shared so publicly our journey. And I did so because particularly for those that explore a long distance relationship, but more importantly, the importance to go all in. And interestingly enough, I, I think all in, the all in of all in is marriage. You know, the second version of all in is engagement prior to marriage. And the third version of all in is living together. And that's what we did. And I want you to know something. Um, we did this with the best intentions. I know for a fact that Marie went into this because she was the one who moved. It took a lot of courage to make a change in her life. And I give her a lot of credit for making that move. And we really, we had a wonderful relationship. So you might be asking, why is it ending? You're probably curious. You're all going, why, why, why? Well, as I said in the beginning of this broadcast, Sometimes two people can't meet each other where they need to be met. 
or it might be that a person needs to grow and they can't do so in the container of this relationship. Marie wasn't happy living in Los Angeles, but I reckon she recognized there was something deeper going on for her. She was really thirsty for her tribe, her community, particularly her Colombian roots. And it was difficult for her because in her case, she was um, retired. So basically our relationship had to fully fulfill her. And what we both learned is one individual can't fulfill all your needs. And that put pressure on our dynamic to some degree. And while I'm blessed to be able to share with you what brings me the most passion in life is an understanding of human behavior and relationships. Sadly, Marie didn't have that going for her right now. And she wants to go back to her roots. She wants to go back to her tribe. And where many of them live are in Florida and in Colombia. And because of that, she couldn't do this in the container of our relationship. So we have a we had a very conscious uncoupling. We we really, you know, we did this with a lot of love. And while we're still in the parts of breaking up, if you will, uh, logistically speaking, we've done this with a lot of love. Now I'll share with you. I noticed there was a change in her a few months ago. I noticed her pulling back. Why I'm bringing this up is you probably have experienced the same thing. You noticed a shift within someone. And during that shift, we had a number of conversations with one another. And as, as she was sorting this out for herself, she was struggling to share her truth with me because she was in a state of confusion. And it wasn't until her most recent trip to Columbia that she did get a handle on it. And thankfully, because I'm attuned, we could have a conversation. Thankfully, because I have a voice, we could have a conversation. What I mean by a voice is thankfully because I'm unafraid to speak my truth in a kind, loving way. We were able to open up this conversation and recognize that the two of us weren't really getting our total needs met in this relationship. And it was going to be very difficult to do this in the container of commitment, in the container of logistics. And many of you probably have found yourself in very similar situations. I'm gonna tell you something. The year I've been with Marie has been the best year of my life. I mean, it really has. I have no regrets. I am so grateful for this experience. She taught me so much and I hope she feels the same way. I know she feels the same way. You know, if I hadn't done the self-love work, if I hadn't done, by the way, here's a copy of my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. Why I'm bringing this up, if I had not done the work ahead of time, this would have been a devastating experience for me. This is what so many people experience is a devastating experience because they've given their power away to another person. I never gave my power away to her. That's why this doesn't feel devastating. Now, that's not to say it doesn't feel sad. I got to tell you, prior to hitting the record button today, my hand was shaking because I know many of you had high hopes for us. It almost feels like an embarrassment that I introduced her and to the extent that I expanded upon the relationship, I did so because what, I'm, what I wanted everyone to recognize is if you don't go in consciously, if you go in unconsciously, if you only focus on the entertainment, then you possibly could find yourself in a position of being devastated when one person doesn't meet you where you're at. In our case, we went in, we went in all in the best we could at where we are at in our lives. And she's in a slightly different place and I don't fault her for that. You know, we had our differences. We Humans, we all have our differences with another person. You have to accept that. And what we learned through radical honesty, what we learned through laying our cards on the table, what we learned in the rules of engagement through this experience that our journey was meant to be for exactly as long as it was. And now we're parting in two different directions. And there's still going to be love between us, not that romantic love, but that love of just like, I care about this other person. And I know she genuinely cares for me. Doesn't mean that we're going to, you know, be best buddies. You know, she's living in, she's going to be moving to Florida, but we will still be in each other's lives because love doesn't, 
You know, love is never wasted. And honestly, I want the best for her, just like she wants the best for me. I want to say, did we see this coming? I know many of you are going to bring up, oh, we saw this coming, Jonathan. You know, we knew she wasn't right for you. I had a lot of um, uh, detractors in the group. Some of that was based on your own egos expressing. Did I see this coming? I, I don't know if it matters if I saw it coming. What matters most is how we both showed up in this relationship. We did our best to be conscious, communicative, expressive. We dealt with things immediately. We didn't sweep them under the rug. Plus, we traveled and I got this. Listen, I'm a homebody and she got me out of my, my cocoon. I am so grateful for that. She got me out of, she allowed me to see she allowed me to see parts in myself that I couldn't see. And I think that's what happened for her. I had someone write, Jonathan, if you overanalyze this relationship, you'll lose Marie. She's, she's right and she's wrong in that comment. See, what happened was our relationship through my experience in human behavior, we had an opportunity to explore that she had a horrific childhood really horrific childhood, a very traumatic childhood. And she had two very traumatic relationships after that. Many of you might relate to that. And through that, while she had done some healing in that, she really hadn't done the deeper work to heal what was hurting inside of her. And she recognizes now that that has to be done outside of the container of a relationship. Many of you are choosing people who are unconscious to their childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas, and they're so stuck in their childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that they're not able to grow with you in, a con in the container of a relationship. And I recognize that this can be very frustrating for you. But going in consciously, that requires, well, first off, going in without giving your power away, going in with the best intentions, but more importantly, going in intentionally speaking. Dating today is just a protracted version of friends with benefits. And I'm here to explore, as, as the weeks and months go on, as we unravel the tapestry of our lives, and as I put myself in the position of attracting a new partner in my life, whether it happens or not, the most important relationship I have is the relationship I have with myself. And why I'm saying this is the most important relationship you have is the relationship with yourself, whether you are mated or not. See, when you show up fully whole and you meet someone else fully whole and you're whole, you can join together in union and then explore the nooks and crannies of that particular expansion and growth. This is hard, guys. This is hard. Because I know you guys really, many of you really appreciate our relationship. And I'm sad. I'm going to miss that daily interaction. I had fun with Marie. You know, I think of it, I, I said to a friend of mine the other day, you know, where we just won the Super Bowl and now we're moving, we're retiring from the game. And what I meant by that is we're really leaving on a high note because this wasn't an issue with the other person. We didn't have criticism, contempt, defensiveness, stonewalling. This wasn't one of those relationships where there was anger, resentment, suffering going on all involved. We really showed up as two whole human beings loving each other as good friends love each other. And, and that's something to celebrate. And what I'm here to encourage everyone to do is to recognize that maybe Maybe some of you are in a relationship right now where you can't grow as a person or they can't grow with you as a person. And it's okay to let go and move on. This is why I continually encourage doing the personal development work, self-help and spiritual work, so you can begin to explore a more conscious way of dating, mating, and relating. And I'll be sharing more of my journey as, we, as the weeks and months um, progress. First off, thank you for allowing me to share this with you. I see a lot of comments in here, which I won't get a chance to read till later. I appreciate that. I do want to open it up for questions, whether it's about the content or whether it's what I have shared. And if you have a question, uh, you want to be on live, join me live. I put a link there below. Um, 
And if you have a question, write the word question and post the question there after. It may, you may have to repeat yourself or you can purchase the super sticker, super chat. Those are the ones that I can see very quickly. All the monies from the super sticker, super chat goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's a picture of him right there on Father's Day. He's my son who passed away five years ago. In his honor, I donate to causes like the Hoffman Process, Insight Institute, and I still will be donating to Seeds of Love, which is an organization in Colombia that helps uh, underprivileged children with terminal disease after being aban uh, abandoned by their parents. All right. So I see there's a few people in the house. Um, I know you weren't expecting this, Christine, but um, hi there. Well, Christine. All right. How about Grace is in the house? Hi, Grace. Hi, Jonathan. Um, Hi. And thank you for sharing your wisdom with us and your story. And um, I just wanted to say, you know, the part that you spoke about what happened to Marie as a child. Um, yeah. I had a very, I don't know exactly what happened to her, but mine was not very good. It was very bad. A lot of yeah. beatings, a lot of uh, verbal abuse, punishment, physical abuse. So speaking for myself, and I'm going to be 63 years old, my question is, is the healing, my true healing didn't really start probably till after I'd had so many failed relationships and yeah. raised a kid by myself and became a grandma and everything. And my mom was sick with cancer is when I started looking in and saying, you're not a healed person. And that's why you can't never hold on to anyone. You can't yeah. hold on to any boyfriend. You drive them all off. You have a lot of deep rooted problems. And so I went to YouTube and that's kind of how I found you. And okay. uh, over the last couple of years, I have been doing a lot of every day now, every day I work on myself. Every yeah. Every day. It's like working out. You know, I work out. I don't know if you can tell, but I work out several times a week and it's a habit and I make myself do it. And, but the, but the self-help work, because you can't be raised in a violent environment and expect that it's going to go away. It's just a, yeah. it's a cloud that follows you, but you can have sunshine. If you work yeah. on it every day and you ask the sun to shine, it'll shine, but you have to work on it. Yeah. And so um, you have a question in there. <laughs> well, question, I guess the question would be, and I can ask this question probably for you as well. Cause I had to let so go of someone more than likely he it's because he's a, a narcissist and a, and he's got the uh, avoidant attachment style and I'm the opposite. I've, I'm a needy, you know, more needy like you and um, <laughs> probably drive them further away because they're already anxious. I'm anxious. All right, Grace, avoidant. Grace, Grace, ask a question. I guess the question is, do you in your mind have, have hope? Well, I don't want to say hope, but do you think that a relationship like you and Marie's, even though you're going to part as friends and everything um, can come back together? Okay. So, well, thank you for what you shared. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the kind words. Um, you know, we're, we're parting with love. Okay. I want to yeah. just be clear of yeah, and the reason that. why I say that. I'm differentiating friends versus love. We're parting with love and how that transmutes over the next few months. We'll see what happens. Um, I am not and, and I'll be candid with you, it was her choice to make the decision. Um, and I only bring that up is I recognize that her choice was really the right choice for me as much as it was for her. It's just a different side of the coin. And it, and it took me, you know, my ego was hurt a little bit and I was kind of like pouting, like, how could you, you know, like I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you and I'm a great guy and I have all this worth. I went through all those alliterations for about a nanosecond with her and I'm being candid with you. I don't hold space about getting back together because that energy is, is, is going to block me from attracting whatever love is meant to my life, whether it's her or someone else. Okay. Now, in the case of her exploring her own journey, how that looks for her, I, that could take weeks, months, years 
mm -hmm. for her to really find her center. And when you mentioned, uh, you know, her childhood was, um, you know, alcoholic father, abuse, and a neglectant mother. And and I only share this publicly so people just understand. I'm not just talking about garden variety, you know, yeah. uh, parent. She really had traumatic childhood, and. And she has three siblings, and I don't think they ever recovered from that for themselves. She had done. You don't recover. That's why I said it's so important. Let me explain this. Um, she had done Life Spring at the age of eighteen and nineteen, and I don't think she would have became the woman she is if she hadn't done that at an early age. Mm -hmm. What happens is, is those wounds will 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 rise up to the surface, and sadly, I think for herself. And I don't think she'll mind me sharing this. She chose her two significant relationships after her, you know, when she, uh, her, mar her marriage and her other significant relationship, she had a propensity to meld into the man's life. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, and so when I, she came I saw, to me. I saw that. I saw that in yeah. the way she looked at you and the way when you yeah. two interacted on your shows, I could see that. Yes, yeah, so I she could melded see that in my life. And, and my, my reason for bringing this up is I don't think she ever really fully got to know who she was as a person outside of a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so right now she wants to be with her tribe or community. This is something she's yearned for. And I think we all need tribe and community. I mean, here, particularly in the United States, but in almost all over the world, we're, we're, di we're, we're displaced from our tribe, our community. We're, we're required to do it all on our own. And worse, we're required to make one person responsible for all of our needs. And it puts too much pressure on one person to fit all our needs. This is one of the reasons why I'm very, you know, when I, I told everyone I wasn't, um, I wasn't interested in the long distance relationship. Part of the reason was this, you know, if, if you have a tribe somewhere and for her, her tribe started to disband years ago in Chicago and started to move all to Florida. Um, and when I'm she was in Florida, <laughs> okay. So when she was considering a change, Florida was on the top of her list. Why I'm bringing this up is that, you know, while Los Angeles was a secondary place, what was really what her heart was thirsty for was community. Mm -hmm. tribe connection mm -hmm. you know i have that here to that degree and while she did her best to to integrate into that it wasn't right it wasn't the 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 exact container she needed mm -hmm. so coming full circle to your question i don't hold hope that we're going to get back together okay i, I don't hold that space okay. i hold the space of just simply loving her. And I got to tell you something, I'm really proud of myself. I am proud of the work I did prior. Now, why I'm saying this is I witness particularly women, but it more, more, more so than men, they've given their power away to men. They make their whole existence based on being loved by this person. And then they're devastated and crushed when it doesn't work out. And then there's this fantasy that love will solve all our problems. No. That is not it. Love is just the icing on the cake. Right. Love does not solve your problems. And the other thing I want to say this, the quality of a relationship isn't measured by time. You know, the fact that it was a year and it's ending on a high note, I'm fucking grateful. Could you imagine if it dragged out for another six months, a year where there was starting that, you know, we'd start to get on each other's nerves and shit like that. And we went in with all the best intentions. We did the radical honesty. Yeah. We laid the cards on the table. We we set the rules of engagement. It was a blessing. It was just a blessing. Yeah. You know, and you can't look at it any other way. And she's a wonderful yeah. lady. And she's going to go do the things she needs to do. I can yeah. honestly say, and if anybody else wants to put in the chat room to Jonathan, if they agree with me or not, I'm going to make a statement and I can see, even though I knew that didn't know that you were officially broke, you and Marie had officially broken up. I noticed a big change in you, Jonathan, when you, when she moved there and when you would do your shows. Um, and then like everything was pretty good when you did your ones by yourself, but whenever you you guys did the I had I couldn't watch your together shows. I'm gonna be honest. I would only and then I wasn't watching them at all. 
And you know what? I, Grace, I appreciate what you're going to share, but I'd rather not go there. That that. I just want to say yeah. you seem no, no, I appreciate more relaxed. That. You okay, seem more relaxed. That, but if anyone, I've seen a couple of comments already in the posts of, of disparaging Marie. And let me be clear. No, with I'm everyone. not disparaging. Well, I'm, I know I'm you're not. Grace, you. Grace, Grace, Grace. I know you're not. Okay. I know you're not. Okay? You just seem so, happy. No, I, that's what I, thank you for noticing that. And let me just say this, anyone who disparages me, Marie, in these chat boxes or on my channel or in the comments, that's not going to be tolerated because they didn't know what actually happened behind closed doors. Right, and you I wasn't see, asking anybody to disparage you. You just see a sliver. And to the extent that this person was an amazing fucking person in my life, I'm not saying this to you, Grace, I'm saying that to some of those people are making comments. Yeah, you seem happy to me. I mean, you seem like the I, John I, Perry, This I was know. an amazing experience for me and why I'm sharing this with everyone. And I'm going to, I'm going to end our part in this. I'm going to open it up to others. If someone wants to join in, they can join in right now. Everyone, I want you to ask yourself four questions after a relationship ends. And these questions are, what positive things did I learn about myself in this experience? How did I heal from this experience? What was good about this experience and what am I most grateful for? And let me be clear, I have gratitude that is overflowing in abundance in this dynamic. Grace, thank you for sharing what you did. I want to I open like it up. I like your colored shirt side. and that's thanks to Marie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's, big hugs an, to you, okay? there's an example. Bye. Yeah, big hugs to you. Thanks. Bye. I really appreciate Grace coming on. Folks, if you have something to share, I'm going to, if you want to join the, the hot seat. Um, Honey You says, let's be thankful for sharing their life lesson with us. Thank you so much. C2 says, says Maria is wonderful. Jonathan is wonderful. Best to both of you. All right. Let's see what else. I saw some questions here. Um, one of my Facebook group members has jumped in. Is there anything you've learned from this experience which would you would do or not do when entering into a new relationship in the future? You know, I think I'm going to be processing that over a little bit of time. Um, I, I, I really need to sit with, with, um, with what did I learn from this experience? What positive things did I learn about myself and how did I heal? I think... You know, many of you know I've shared publicly having an anxious love attachment style. And to the degree that Marie was, you know, kind of the opposite end of that, it, we weren't at extremes, okay? You know, when people are in, when, when someone's an extreme anxious and they're with an extreme avoidant, that's called drama, okay? We weren't at extremes. I think I learned to become a more secure person in relationship. That's one thing I'm grateful for. And I healed that within myself, um, or at least I'm healing that. I believe we all have a default, whether we're anxious or avoidant. I think that's a default love attachment style. I don't, you know, to the extent that Amir Levine and Rachel Heller say that 50% of the population is secure, I don't buy that. I don't know how they quantify it, but I don't, I don't buy that. I think we're either anxious or avoidant at our default. And then how far we are from that center ends up Di dictating the kind of relationships we have. So I think I've done healing to come more to secure. That's number one. What was good? We traveled. I went through the Panama Canal. I went to Cartagena, Colombia. I went to Guatemala. I went to the Mexican Riviera. We took trips to Chicago. We took other trips to Florida. You know, she got me out of my bubble. She got me out of my little bachelor pad and we have a nice place here and I'm going to keep the place we're in. Okay, we acted as partnerships with one another. We contributed financially to this dynamic, you know, within a, the parameters that we agreed in. We went in with agreements with one another. Oh my God, so many of you enter into the dating dynamic without any agreements. And you wonder why it, it, it implodes later. And so I'm going to be talking about this incessantly the importance of establishing agreements early on and going all in early on. And if the man is incapable, if they're afraid of marriage, if they're afraid of uh, living with someone, if they give excuses, if they're not in love with the idea of it, 
then guess what? You are rolling the dice with someone and you're rolling the dice with your heart because the, at the end of the day, just like what Rabbi Manus Friedman shared, I think the true growth happens in the container of all in, whatever all in looks like, okay? Whether it's marriage, whether it's domestic partnership, whether it's living together, whatever all in looks like for you, okay? And all in, you know, is all in. It's a declaration. It's a declaration to one another. And if you don't have that conversation about all in, you're rolling the dice. And then you're going to find yourself in a circumstance where you're going to be doing this over and over and over again. And remember, as I said in this video, relationships are a container for healing. Spiritual people get this message. When I see spiritual, conscious, awaken, enlightened people. All right. If you want to jump in, you want to jump in, you want to speak to me directly. Um, Rose says, Jonathan is teaching us in real time how to gracefully, lovingly, and maturely part ways rather than slander or talk smack post breakup. If he's, if he's not doing it, that's not your call to do it for him. Thank you so much, Rose. Folks, I originally waited, thinking about waiting till the end of the month when Marie returns from Columbia and do this jointly. No, I think it's important to share this from real time. How am I feeling this? How am I experiencing this right now? Um, so let's see. Vivian says, I'm sorry to hear this, Jonathan. Marie is a beautiful woman inside and out. I hope she will find peace in her healing journey. It's heartbreaking to hear, and I wish you happiness and love. Thank you so much. Carmen wants me to uh, share what is her love attachment style. I believe that I am slightly anxious and she is slightly avoidant. I say slightly, okay? I think we're both, the fact that we had a really good relationship for the most part tells me we were bordering on secure. But ultimately, what no matter what the default is, you have to understand, if you don't go back and heal the root cause of our emotional distress, which is our childhood wounds and traumas, if you don't go back and really work on it, and as Grace was saying, it's a daily practice. I do, and, and I'll be candid with you all. In this relationship, I abandoned my daily practice. I abandoned my uh, meditation. I abandoned my daily practice. And when this all went down, I immediately went back to my daily practice of meditation, of working with a coach. I'll bring my coach back on to talk about this in a little more detail. But I got out of my routine. Now, thankfully, I'd done all the Herculean work ahead of time. Please forgive the pit stains. I'm sweating here a bit. Um, I'd done the Herculean work ahead of time, so I didn't give my power away. Ah, let's keep on. Melissa says, I'm sorry, Jonathan, big hugs for you. I'm still healing from a breakup from April. We are together for a year and four months. Your teachings have helped me to tremendously. Thank you for sharing. Melissa, I just want to invite you to remember these four questions to ask yourself. What positive things did I learn about myself in this experience? How did I heal from this experience? What was good and what's most grateful for? When you're in a state of gratitude, you cannot suffer. And make your gratitude not about the person, about the experience. Focus on the experience and you'll heal much faster is my suggestion for you. All right. Tina says, Marie is sweet. I agree. Marie is a, Marie is a special lady, you guys. Um, let's see if there's any questions. Uh, if you have a question for me, write the word question and post the question there after, or you can jump on. Okay, we see a question right here. Dana writes, I'm saddened to hear the news, even though it, it may be both life paths to be separate. I'm sorry for both of this going on for you. That's not a question, but thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Folks, I really would like to have a question. Jay says, how would you deal with someone that has a short fuse and anger burst? Okay, folks. Um, what's the expression, uh, fool me once, shame on them. Fool me twice, shame on me. 
if someone now it's okay so that would be difficult to you know address right off the bat but if someone has a propensity for a short fuse or anger i think it's important to express is it about you or is it about a situation ship is it if there's something external going on okay that person gets triggered and they have to get to the root of what the trigger is now you are not obligated to hold space for someone See, that's kind of the thing that's happening here with Marie. It, it reached a point where I was holding space for her growth, but that growth had to be done outside of the container of a relationship. And because I'm a therapist, I'm not a therapist, but because I kind of operate as a therapist, I have a lot of compassion and understanding. At the same time, you know, you might end up compromising a bit of yourself by having, you know, compassion and understanding. So I wouldn't, I would basically, if this is a continually pattern, invite them to heal it and maybe do it outside the container of a relationship. That would be my invitation for you. CC says, best advice, there are many dating coaches that say, don't ask those difficult questions up front. I say the opposite. If that, if their advice was so right, why do people enter into six-week relationships, find it ending, and it's miserable when you could have predicted some of these things sooner rather than later? We went, Marie and I went in, when we recognized, here, here's something I'll share with you. So we met each other. There was mutual physical attraction and interest, okay? And then I invited her to the wedding, mutual interaction and interest. So then she came out here to Los Angeles to visit her family and spend four days with me. In those four days, we said, look, if this is going to work, if we're going to explore a relationship, then let's do it intentionally. We laid our, we were radically honest, laid our cards on the table. We set the rules of engagement. And then when she left, we agreed that we were going to explore a relationship in the confines of monogamy and exclusivity. Okay. We made an agreement, monogamy and exclusivity, and we'd explore a relationship. The next visit she came out, we said, if this is going to work, we'd have to, she'd have to live in the same city because I wasn't planning on moving to Chicago and she wanted to leave Chicago. So we ag immediately agreed by her second visit here that we would explore living together. Okay. Some people might say, wow, that was radically fast. Okay. You know what? Dating is a protracted version of friends with benefit. Friends with benefits. You guys are belaboring the dating process because you're more focused on entertainment and transactional and conditions instead of consciously. Like we did a deep dive for four days. We laid our cards on the table. We were on. We we did honesty the best we could, and we established the rules of engagement, folks. It's not measured in time. It's measured in quality. Quality is not measured in time. Time isn't, you know, it's not about the time. It's about the quality. All right. You heard my rant there. All right. Um, if, you have, if you want to jump on the hot seat, join me now. Okay. Classy Sassy writes, Jonathan, could you please tell me how to deal with another that gaslights not being accountable for one-sided view? Listen. If you're, okay, it comes back to this. If you made repeated attempts to create closeness, commitment, safety, and trust, if you made repeated attempts and it hasn't been met, what's the title of this video? Letting go. How to know it's time to move on when you've made repeated attempts and they're not able to meet you. That's how you handle that. You move on. Folks, don't you know, this isn't about being a martyr and staying in a relationship, you know, and if I love him more, if I love her more, she'll change. No. God, I'm really sweating up a storm. <laughs> um, no. So I would move on in this particular case. One of our Facebook group members wants to remind me, I read the book, Spiritual Partnership, The Journey of Authentic Power. It changed how I look at relationships. All relationships have the power to teach us or heal us. That's what Marie did for me. I'm so thankful for that. Dana, we were in a relationship, but not compatible. We still dance when we meet. How do I handle watching him flirt with other women if it's weirder to have no communication? Okay. Dana, when you love yourself, it, it, well, let me ask you a question. Did you love him? If you really loved him, then you want the best for him. Just like I want the best for Marie. If Marie meets a great guy, 
you look at, it's going to sting a little bit. I'm not going to lie, but I'm also going to be happy for her because I also know someone special is going to come into my life. I don't just hope for it or believe it. I know it. Okay. Number one. Number two, when you love yourself and you know your worth, you don't get triggered by it. See, that's the work. The work is not, you know, if you're getting triggered by it, then that means you have to work on yourself. That's the antidote to suffering. The antidote to suffering is self-love. Personal development, self-help and spiritual work, a daily practice. That's the antidote. That's the vaccination to emotional chaos. And I invite that in for your life. All right. Um, thank you, Dana, so much. Siri says, or I don't know how to pronounce your name. Do you, don't you think you will ever feel broken by a breakup ever again? Can you handle breakups? Do you think that means you're not as attached to someone? Great question. You know, after losing my son and the, the, the devastating loss of that, I can handle anything. Well, I mean, I don't want to test that. God, I'm not testing that. You know, when I lost my identity, I was devastated. When I lost Connor, thankfully I'd done the, the work prior to, so this didn't take me down. I chose to grieve with love. So by the time I reach this particular place with Marie, I'm, not, I'm grieving the ending with love. See, love is the antidote to all this, loving myself and loving her. That's the antidote to all of this. That's the vaccination. So when you come from a place of genuinely loving yourself, and by the way, it's always a journey of loving yourself. You never fully complete this journey. I'm still a work in progress. How many times have I told you guys, I'm fucked up? It's just a matter of degrees. I, I, you, some of you put me up on a pedestal. I'm no picnic to be with, okay? Believe me, we had our own, we had our prickly parts between the two of us. But what we had was good communication between the two of us. And that's why we're able to work through our stuff from a place of love. And I'm grieving this with love. Uh, Mary says, is, it, is, it, is dating a retired person harder when you're not retired? I'm a retired person trying to. The challenge with a retired person is do they have purpose? Do they have purpose? My mother and father, when my father retired, you know, my dad put his energy into starting clubs and organizations. My mother was a champion bridge player and she put her energies in a different place. So empty nesters, for example, if they don't find their purpose when they're retired or with kids out of the home, yes, it can be very problematic. If you have a purpose, it's not going to be as problematic. Can you give examples of questions to ask when you begin a relationship? Yes. What does a relationship look like for you? What does commitment look like for you? Are you do you love the idea of marriage? Do you love the idea of living with someone? Ask these deeper questions. Yes, those are good questions. Honey says, Jonathan's advice saved us time and energy. I'd rather know than wait a decade that we're not a fit for one another. Exactly. Minnesota, by the way, if you have a question, here, jump on. Come on. If you felt like I gave Grace a hard time, I apologize. I just wanted to open space for other people. All right, Minnesota girl. What are your thoughts on a couple that breaks up and goes their separate ways? They mature and do work on themselves. Fate puts them together 15 years later. I feel like timing. Um, you know what? It could mean there's a karmic relationship between the two of you. That might mean that there might be some more work that needs to be done, or it might mean that you'll go the distance. See, here's the thing I've observed, folks. Relationships are not about going the distance because the fact of the matter is one person is going to die before the other. One person is going to be alone for a period of time. My father now has been alone for six years. What I mean alone is my mother passed away. Now he's 98, so he's not out there, you know, banging it, if you will. But you are, one person is going to die before the other. So relationships are a container not about going the distance unless you both die at the same time. In the movie, The Notebook glorified that. Relationships are about finding out who you are 
and you've been given a mirror to explore that. Marie gave me such a gift. I realized that there was some deficiencies in who I am as a man, and she was able to draw attention to that based on who she was. I am grateful for that. Um, so anyway, Minnesota, I hope that answered your question. Julia is in the house. When is enough enough when it comes to being with an individual for over 20 years and our partner only shows respectful improvement after we have done so frustrated, we kick them out to leave? Yeah, it's interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine that was married for 15 years. In the last 10 years, she was unhappy. Great guy, by the way. I, I love them both, okay? It took, she said to me, it took me 10 years to figure it out. It took me 10 years to get the courage to suggest that they, they separate. How, and however long it takes for you, that's how long it's going to take. You know, I think with Marie in particular, she recognized, I, I'd say what happened was she went back for a funeral in April and it really stirred her up. And we processed a lot of stuff during that experience of her family of origin stuff. So I would say by May, June, for two months, she was really wrestling with what was going on. And thankfully I was a container for her to explore these things because I asked the deeper questions. And so by the time July rolled around, she recognized that there was real, she was really hurting and she wasn't being fair to me. See, sometimes a relationship ends because you're doing it for the other person as much as you're doing it for yourself. See, that's the way grown-ups part. And grown-ups accept it because you recognize that the other person needs to grow on their own, whether they're, you know, and not in the container of a relationship. Julia, thank you so much for the question. Siri says, you're not feeling what it's like without Marie yet. So um, as of this date, we've been apart for the last 30 days, we've been apart for almost three, uh, it's, she was gone for two weeks, came back for a week, has been gone for a week. So yes, you're true. You know, I'm not feeling it, but I'm also doing a lot of work to heal. This is the time where I'm putting my energy to heal. You know, yes, it's, you know, it sucks. Okay, folks, it sucks. I'm not, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. And the reason why I'm not bawling my eyes out in front of you, because I could gain sympathy from you or, or start to kind of, uh, you know, express something that might feel more true is because I've gone through the, I've gone through a big chunk of the grieving process, which is accepting it. You know, I got a little bit of angry. I didn't get depressed. I won't do depression because that's giving your power away because I choose to, um, you know, end with love, but I'm also coming to acceptance. When you come to acceptance, you can then begin the healing process. I did all of that in a short period of time, and now I'm just focusing on my own individual healing. Miss Manager wants to know, how do you know that this is just a hiatus in the relationship? What are the tick boxes to fully know that it's definitely will never work? How does one know when it's ended? Well, let me just be clear. Okay. She wants to move to another place. That's definitive. Okay. And she's making arrangements for that. Okay. When she moves. Okay. That's another definitive point. Okay. What I won't do is beg for someone to come back to me and I'm not expecting her to, you know, miss me. If she miss, if she comes back to me because of missing me, then it's, then she hasn't done the work. Okay. So, it's not about knowing that it ended because our relationship didn't end. Our romantic relationship ended. It's transmuting into a different relationship. That relationship will find its new form. And if it comes back to romantic relationship, it comes back to romantic relationship. I'm just not holding space for that because that's where so many of you humans get all tangled up. You're holding hope instead of moving on with your life. Thank you, Miss Manager. Good morning, Jonathan. Any thoughts about Landmark Forum? I recently took the online free workshop and I found it not everyone's cup of tea. Some say it's a cult. I have many friends who have done it and have gotten great benefits. I don't believe it's a cult. 
Um, but I, I, I do believe it's a, a personal development workshop that has its motivations, okay? Every personal development organization has its own motivations. I don't believe it's nefarious. I think it's probably profit driven, but I don't think it's nefarious. But there's a lot of great teachings at that within that. I like the Hoffman process. I like insight in seminars, but some people believe that's a cult. Okay. Some people believe that gurus in India are, you know, uh, abusive and whatnot. But whoever you can grow and learn from, that's who you should follow. Whoever, whatever that feels like you're growing. That's the people. And if Landmark feels that for you, go to an event and see how it feels like. But remember, you give your power away when you make your when you make your identity wrapped up in, in someone else or something else that's giving your power away. And by the way, some organizations are good at taking your power away, but that's really the journey, isn't it? Not to give your power away. <laughs> Honey says, after no contact and a breakup, is it okay to send emotional texts to dumper. You know what? Again, if you're if you're parting with love, then you can do whatever you want. Sometimes people don't have the inner strength and they're hoping they're sending that text for just a a, a dopamine hit from the other person. If that's the reason for it, then I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Siri says, I hope I'm pronouncing your right now. Did you see it coming? You know, I have to really, and, and because I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to give, you know, a voice to some of the things I recognize throughout our relationship that wasn't completely aligned. Okay. I do recognize some of those things. Um, now that it's come to fruition, I realize where we're misaligned. Okay. You know, Love, love blinds us, okay? Love, love does, you know, when I say it blinds us, when we love someone, we hold hope. It's very common to hold hope that there'll be a shift. You know, even someone like myself and, you know, whether there were red, by the way, there were no red flags, you know? There were maybe some yellow flags, but there were no red flags. There were a lot of green flags, but there were no deal breakers. See, there were no deal breakers. That's the difference. There were no deal breakers. Red flags means ask questions. And as you explore a relationship, you're asking questions about who this person is. I feel like when I brought it to the attention to have the conversation, I accepted that. Okay, so let me just say this. When she came back from Columbia, I knew something was off. I brought it, I brought it up. And I, I explored that it could have two outcomes. We'd either get closer together or it's time to move on. I accepted both of those choices when I initiated the conversation. I accepted that there was an opportunity to get us closer together or that we could move on. So I was in a position to explore it from a place of accepting either one. By the way, does that, come on, someone wanna join me? Oh, okay. Jill is in the house. How long should we wait before jumping back into another relationship? I know it's a personal decision, but how do we know when you're ready? You know, when you can, when you feel love for the other, when you can feel love for yourself and genuine love for the other person without, atta without the attachment of wanting them back, so whenever you don't, or you, you've let go, you've let go of the attachment of them coming back. You're loving yourself. You're loving them. That's when you're ready, Jill. That can happen rather quickly, you know? And uh, in our particular case, there's going to be still a little unraveling of the relationship because of logistics. So, um, but I, I've accepted that uh, I have no holding space that she's you know, that will, we're, I'm not trying to force her to reconcile. I'm not expecting her to reconcile and I'm loving myself and I'm loving her in the process. Okay. Uh, Melissa says, I'm learning detachment. Way to go. 
Siri says, I so needed to hear this today. Bless you for the courage to share this. You're very welcome. Jane says, separation of partner does feel like grief or detachment, but with time, it passes. True. <laughs> Rose says, Jonathan's spitting some truth and fire, and it burns. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, you've caught me to believe that radical honesty up front is really the best way to go. It proves so much insight into the other person. Way to go. Doreen says, I've done Landmark as well. It's not a cult. I wish that rumor would end. I agree. Helen says, sending you the biggest massive hugs and love. Take care of you, wonderful man. If you need support, reach out to your lovely group. I have as well. Okay. Let's see if we have any more questions. Um, let's see. I know some of you have opinions around Marie. Let me just say this. You guys don't know what the fuck happened behind closed doors. I'm sorry. I, 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 I really don't appreciate some of your perceptions or projections. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing this out of protection for her because that's what a man does. They protect their partner, even though we're apart. Okay. She is an amazing human being. She's an amazing human being. She's a great partner. She is a great partner. She showed up the best she could, okay? And she had a fucked up childhood and some fucked up relationships. You know, until you walk a mile in someone's shoes, don't criticize another person. Don't project. And certainly, if you haven't lived in my shoes, don't make any projections. Because quite frankly, the most amazing person I've ever got. I mean, I've experienced some amazing people. My ex-wife was an amazing person. My most significant relationship after my divorce was an amazing person. And Marie is equally in that category. Um, Jill wants to say, thank you. Excellent answer. Feels right for me. I appreciate that. Johanna has a question. How do I share my previous experience? I've been divorced twice to my new date without throwing them under the bus. Great question. You if you if you need to state a fact about what happened, you state the fact and 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 is a plus sign and you share taking ownership of how you were a contributor to the end of the relationship. Many of you do a terrible job at that. Guess what? When someone doesn't take ownership in their part of the ending and I see that they're just deflecting it on the other person, that to me is a person who hasn't evolved. So um, be careful um, because you should never throw someone under the bus. You could simply say, you know what? Our relationship was misaligned. We had different values. I was on a different path than him. And we chose to part you know, after X amount of years. Now, if they want to get the specifics because they might need to know the specifics, I think it's important to share, but do it from a place of love, not a place of judgment. All right. This manager says, I was seeing someone on and off for 10 years. We could not seem to get it off on a relationship. He played, he played anyway. Now it's back to confirm. So folks, Rabbi Manis said, said Rabbi Manis Friedman said something the other day in the video I posted with him that was fascinating. Every relationship, not in the container of marriage or the, the commitment container of marriage. See, basically every relationship that isn't marriage is casual and people can cheat. They can mess around. They can flirt with other people when you're in a casual relationship. They can do whatever they want because there's no agreements between the two of you. So if he played, he messed around, he was, he was unfaithful, you accepted it because you accepted something less than full commitment. Folks, I really want you to lean into that for a second. You've accepted something without full commitment. Don't settle for less than full commitment, whatever that looks like for you. Um, Jill wants to just share, share with everyone. I've done landmark lots of, uh, did a lot of work years ago, changed my life. Thank you for that. So folks, 
Uh, I've been sweating up bullets. Look at this. I mean, I've just been sweating up a storm. This has been tough on me. I know it may not seem that way. It may seem like there's a mask on. No. I'm really in a state of gratitude for all of this. And I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss her. I liked hanging out with her. We had fun together. We, Our little kids played together. I also recognize that we really came into our lives to heal some deeper parts of us. I think we knew it, you know, I think our souls knew. I think we have a soul contract with each other. Um, and we fulfilled that contract. And now it's time to move on, transmute the relationship into its new form. You know, I'll be candid with you. Oh, so let me share one last bit. And I'll do this again tomorrow when I do my live stream. Hopefully I remember this. I went on the dating apps just to look. Oh my God, was I repulsed. What I mean by it, let me be clear about repulsed. I looked at every woman's profile and said, I'm sending you love, I'm sending you love, I'm sending you love. I'm repulsed by this methodology of meeting and connecting with people. Now that sounds pretty strong, so let me pull back on that. It, do, it just feels awkward, it feels draining, it feels ugh, it feels like vomiting, okay? Because I realize that the next person I meant to go on this journey with, we will find each other in probably a more organic way, okay? We'll find each other in a more organic way. And I really do hold space that the work I do as a coach, what I teach in my coaching is how I'm going to manifest a new amazing person in my life. I've, I've already, my ex-wife was a beautiful human being. We didn't work out. I wasn't the right person then. The next woman I met, beautiful human being. I wasn't the right person. She wasn't the right person for me. Marie, beautiful person. We weren't, it wasn't meant to go the distance. And maybe the next person might not either. That's okay too. But what I do know is our current dating methodology is a clusterfuck. And I'm going to continually be a voice of, of, of encouragement and reason and hope and 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 hopefully knowledge. Because many of you are embarking on relationships or experiences that are, are causing you deep pain and suffering. And until you get to the root of what's causing that, you're going to experience it over and over again. And let me share something with you. I think throughout my whole life until now, I've adopted, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I could feel good about myself. And I even entered into this dynamic, believing a relationship would help me become whole. And what I learned throughout this experience with Marie is I already was whole. I just didn't believe it myself. And just like Neo in the Matrix, Sometimes you have to go through the experience. You have to go through the hero's journey so you can believe your worthiness. And I know for a fact I'm worthy. And I'm inviting all of you to look in the mirror right now. And as soon as this podcast ends, go into the mirror in your bathroom and look at yourself and say, I am worthy. And I will do the work necessary so I become that beautiful, juicy, delicious person that will invite in that beautiful, juicy, delicious relationship in my life. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I invite that all for you. All right. I think this will be a great place to wrap up the video. I hope you found value in it. If you did, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit that notification bell if you need some support. Check out the links below to a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out all the books I recommend including my own book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway. Follow me on Instagram. Say hi to me. I'm going to do my best to respond. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all. And I'm going to end this broadcast as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. I'm going to reach in my, <laughs> give my look at those pit stains and give you a gigantic hug of love. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. 
And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Jill. Uh, Jill's in the house. Miss Manager, Jeanette, Julia, Penny, uh, Flowers, Rose, uh, Give Me Freedom, Honey, Ronnie, Dory, DC, Kelly's mom, Sophie, uh, Jonah, Johan Jonah, Johanna, uh, Anna, Penny, Give Me Freedom. We already said that. Everyone, thank you so much. I really appreciate all your love and support. Sending you off with a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. Be well. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.